Hello, whiskey folk. It's uh, 21.45 GMT. It's quarter to 10 on Thursday. Um, it's the 28th of December. Welcome, everybody, and welcome if you're watching on the, on the replay. Um, I kind of wondered whether or not I should do a live tonight, uh, given how busy everyone is and that it's Christmas and things, but... You know, there's a lot of people kind of hanging around and looking for things to do in an evening, some of them whiskey themed, and uh, certainly I was. So I wanted to, um, I don't have any guests tonight, it's just me, I'm flying solo. And the, the, the reason for that is really that I kind of think the big advantage or the big benefit to a live stream is the fact that the audience gets a bit of a voice and they can participate. And I kind of like that whole question and answer type dynamic. Um, I like to give people um, uh, answers and things to things that they might be curious about. Um, and I also like to just kind of hang out with whiskey folk. And while it's good when you have a guest on, that can be fun. Um, there's just a lot of you guys that have really quite cool opinions and cool insight and knowledge that's in the chat and that join every week. And, uh, and I actually really enjoy hanging out with you. So that's the idea tonight. And there's a kind of loose theme based on the idea of I don't know what a whiskey year or my whiskey year that, that is uh, 2017 because it was it was a reasonably big year for whiskey and for me and whiskey it was a really cool year it was a lot of fun and a lot of things happened to me this year that I really enjoyed so that's kind of the loose theme I've got some notes written down but I have to be honest and say I'm not prepared tonight at all um, I was I'd allocated some time to get prepared um, and then it just ran away from me and we had someone turn up at the door uh, just a few minutes back and things. But I don't think we need any preparation. There's nothing to do except for talk about whiskey. The really cool <laughs> thing is how many people have dropped in already. I noticed Tom R already in, nice and early, and Andy Walker, fantastic to see you both. Hoagie from Germany's here, fabulous. I can see uh, Scott Monroe joining again. Scott, it's great to have you back again, my friend. Welsh Toro has said, Jesus, everyone's in already. <laughs> Hi, Welsh. How are you? Good to see you. Um, OJ for hire. Fantastic. Um, I don't know where you are. I think you're on the West Coast, OJ. So you're quite a few hours behind. Rafael Ortega. Good to see you back again, Rafael. Uh, Justin again. Um, is it Saginas? I'm not sure how to pronounce your surname, Justin. I apologize. Jez, Jez Batty. Fantastic to see you, my friend. Good to see you in again. Amy, um, wonderful. I see you got the notification this time. Uh, good to see you. Um, and again, uh, Dram Dude, wonderful Dram Dude, wonderful to see you back. Ebhead, fantastic to see you again. I think Norway, Ebhead, you're joining us from Norway. George, Amy's husband, fantastic to see you in. And my friend, the Whiskey Rev as well, is also helping me out, doing a wee bit of moderation and just keeping me right. Um, just mute that. Okay, um, I don't really know how to start things off, but what I will say is that I have noticed, normally I shout out and I say, if you want a question directed at me, start it with at Aquaviti, so at AQV, just like just, Justin has just done right this moment. Um, but I've had people saying that that's no good on a mobile device and it doesn't really work. So I'll try and monitor the chat a wee bit better and I'll actually make the chat window as big as I can make it and bring it in right in front of me so that I've got a better chance of catching it. And the whiskey rev will keep me right if I've missed things or if I'm out of sync with something. Um, okay. Uh, Tom R is saying he did open his Balblair 1983 for Christmas. You lucky bugger, Tom. It's a fabulous dram. Words can't describe it. Yes, I remember that. The only time I've tried uh, an 83 was at the Bon Accord and then when I was at Balblair Distillery. Um, and both times they are utterly memorable and just it was a fantastic whiskey. And really great value as well when you consider that 1983, you're looking at, I think when that was bottled, it would probably have been about a 30, 32-year-old whiskey. Um, and for a long time, it hovered around the £190 mark, which is incredible value. Um, I'm very happy that you're enjoying it, Tom. Maybe let us know a wee bit more about it. How are you finding it? Um, and I can see... 
I can see Jason. Jason Whiskey Wise has dropped in. Good to see you, Jason. Um, just a heads up on Jason. Jason has this week completed his um, blind tasting challenge from me. He sat down in front of a camera and he shot himself tasting five blind whiskies and has since handed all the footage over to me for uh, editing and sharing through his channel. So in the coming weeks, um, I'll get a chance to edit that and put that together. Um, I'll try and do it in the next few days, actually, if I can get time. And we can have that up on Jason's channel in early January. But Jason will be the second kind of official guy that did it. It was Food Craig that did it first time round. And then we tightened it up and kind of did a more um, structured thing with Vin at No Nonsense Whiskey. And Vin nominated uh, uh, Jason to take it next. And Jason has uh, since nominated someone as well. I've been in touch with the next guy. He's up for it. Um, and I'm going to arrange that so when Jason's video comes out, you'll know who's nominated next. See a couple of questions coming in. Justin, you pronounced it pretty well. Saginus. Ah, Saginus. Okay. Justin Saginus. I'll try and remember that, Justin. Thank you. Um, it's a bit ironic. A guy who does pronunciation videos is asking for things to be pronounced. <laughs> um, hey, Jason. Nice to see you in. Frank, Frank Lampard and Telex has also joined us. Nice to see you guys in. Fantastic. I think you're both stateside. Um, it seems to me, I don't know, you can maybe give me some feedback on this, but it seems to me this uh, quarter to 10 at night European time, uh, quarter to 11 for continental Europe, seems to be okay. It's not too late for us, and it gives a lot of people that are stateside the opportunity to join in from time to time, I think. And that's certainly the intention. That's what I would like to have. I would like there to be a bit of a bridge. Um, I would like there to be uh, an opportunity to involve guys um, from the States when possible. But you can let me know if how the time's working out for you. If, if everybody thinks that we could do it a bit later, or it's fine to do it earlier, then nothing's carved in stone, right? Um, Aquavite, I've got a little something which will be making its way back to you. Thank you, Jason. A little something that's... Uh, Intriguing. I wonder what that is. Something from your trip to Taiwan, maybe? Raphael is asking, hey there, Roy. Not drinking much whiskey these days. Hmm. I am. Uh, it's 34 degrees outside and the power is out. Oh, wow. So, Raphael, if I, from memory, you're in Argentina, right? But still watching on your battery-powered laptop and maybe through the cell network or something. That's fantastic, Raphael. Any warm weather whiskey that you can think of. Yeah, do you know, I don't really change whiskey in the warm weather other than I probably drink a lot more peated whiskey in the winter time when it's colder. I certainly kind of get my peat face on in the winter time. But I do notice that whiskey tastes a bit different um, when the climate's warmer. When, when I go on holiday in the summertime and I take some whiskeys to Spain um, or I buy whiskeys out there, I do tend to find that the whiskey's tasting better. But you tend to find that whiskey changes with temperature anyway, but the environment can change it significantly as well. I'm, I'm with you there on that, Raphael. Um, but thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us in your power outage and your 34 degree heat and all the way from Argentina. It's a pleasure to have you in. Tom, Aquaviti, I took a half a day at work today so I could be here for the show today. Tom, you're just some kind of awesome. The more I get to know you and the more comments I read from you, the more I think that you're just an absolute gentleman. Perfect. Jez is saying timing is perfect, good. But Jez, I think you're in, you're in the UK, are you not? Um, but it's good to hear it's a good time. Um, everyone's here. Swami's in. Swami, are you not supposed to be watching The Last Jedi? Or is that tonight you're going? Um, Scott, time works for me. <laughs> Scott, you're in the same town, town as me, yeah. Eric Gilbert, fantastic to see you in, Eric. Telex is saying Aquavita later would be better for me since I'm usually not off from work until later about 6 p.m. Eastern, 10 p.m. your time, but can pop in for hour two. Yeah, that's right. And I mean, I don't expect everybody to be here from the first minute to the last minute. I mean, it's absolutely fine for you to just drop in and out and leave a wee footprint and say hello. Uh, Whiskey Jason from Germany. Merry Christmas, Jason. It's wonderful to have you in. Um, so we've got two Jasons in. Uh, Malton, Montreal, Salt, Saltire, nice to see you in, my friend. Um, I hope you got my heads up because I know that you missed the live stream. 
The Last Jedi, what a bloody disappointment that was. I have to disagree a wee bit, Saltire. I know, and there was kind of distractions and odd things that happened. That, but I think they've got a bit of a poisoned chalice. I think it's very difficult for them for them to please everybody with that franchise. And I have to be honest, there were things that happened in that movie, and I don't want to spoil it for anyone, not least of of, who, of which Swami's going to see it tonight. Um, there were moments in that movie that just blew me away. I thought they were fabulous. Um, on balance, I think it was really good. I think it was really good. I think it's the best. Probably not. Um, I, I still think my favourite would be Empire Strikes Back, just because of the time in my life when I saw that and the impact that it had on me and you know the merchandise and the toys and everything that went along with it. Um, but I still thought it was a damn good movie, really a spectacle. And every single one of my kids loved it and sat through the entire two and a half hours of it with not too many complaints. So, yeah, but I can see that um, it's getting a lot of hate thrown at it. Hoagie Bear is asking the time is, or saying the, per the time is perfect for me, one hour ahead in winter time, but summer fits very well. Oh, wow. Okay, well, I thought that you guys did uh, daylight saving as well. Um, I thought you were always an hour ahead, Hoagie. Um, but yeah, I'm hoping that I can kind of keep this going. Maybe not every week, but it'll be a couple of times um, a month would be my target. And then maybe a break in the summertime because things just kind of chill out a wee bit whiskey-wise in the summertime. And I think it's nice to maybe take a break and recharge that kind of thing. But it's good to hear the time is working out for you, Hoagie, and it's a pleasure to have you in. Uh, Scott Monroe, do you have a dram? Perfect timing, Scott. So if I'm talking about the year and and whiskey, I'm talking about kind of from a personal perspective, of course, me, um, the channel and things like that. And I won't spend too much time talking about that because I can't imagine it's that interesting. But um, also from a whiskey perspective, um, and this year is for, for me the year I got to um, – start to appreciate a very specific distillery a lot more than I had in the past. Um, and the reason I didn't appreciate this distillery in the past is that I tried a 12-year-old from them uh, a while back. I had a bottle of it. And it was not awful, but it wasn't very good either. Um, it didn't leave me with a very good impression. And I stayed away from this distillery for a long time and never went back, actively av avoiding or ignoring their expressions when I saw them. And isn't it always the way with whiskey when you do that, uh, you starve yourself of some decent whiskey experiences because things change in whiskey quite fast, often in a positive direction. Um, and a couple of years back, I tasted um, another expression from this distillery. It was very good. And then I tasted another one that was very good. And another one that was very good to the point that pretty much everything I'm picking up and trying and a lot of feedback I'm getting just now about this distillery as well is just wonderful and everything that they're doing is wonderful. Their core range is non-age, sorry, is uh, age statement, 46.3% um, non-chill filtered, and where possible, they try and maintain a policy of natural, no added color, which is perfect for a whiskey geek, exactly what we want, that, that natural presentation. And that distillery is already featured on my live. I did a non-age statement from them a couple of weeks ago, but is, is Deanston. And I would have to say that if I was to put forward a distillery as kind of my distillery of the year, it would probably be Deanston. Um, there's lots of distilleries that I really, really love. And it's a kind of a core group of distilleries that stays inside like a top 10 type block. Um, but Deanston has made its way into that top 10 with considerable impact this year. Um, I just bought another bottle of the 18. Um, even the non statement Virgin Oak that I have downstairs is really engaging. I'm really enjoying just now. Very, very sweet whiskey. Um, but this 12-year-old is just fabulous whiskey. For the money, it's difficult to see past it. And I know that the people that I'm sharing Deanston with just now all come back and give me the same feedback. Keith in the mal uh, Malted Man Cave, I think it was probably his first Deanston maybe. He bought a bottle of the, De the Deanston after a discussion that we had together. And he came back absolutely over the moon with his purchase, absolutely loving it. So, Scott, that was a very long-winded answer to your question um, about what I'm drinking just now. I'm having my second Deanston 12. I had one while I was trying to get things together here. Mm -hmm. Cheers, everyone. Uh, Justin is saying... Um, 
I just bought a bottle of Brickladdy Port Charlotte Scottish Barley. Um, have you had it? No, I don't. I've never had the Scottish Barley, not to my knowledge. Sometimes I try things um, and I forget what they are at whiskey clubs and things. It's easy to forget unless you're taking notes, which I'm not very good at sometimes. Any thoughts? I'm look, looking forward to the 50% ABV warm me up later when I get home. Yeah, you're guaranteed it's going to be damn good. I had a Port Charlotte last night that I bought for a friend a little while ago. I, I secured a bottle of PC8 for him. And I remember when we opened that PC8 together, um, we kind of sat there and we decided that it was a good whiskey, but in no way did it move us in any specific direction. Now, he's had it for a couple of years now, and it's been open and he's been taking drams from it, and there's probably about a third of it left. Um, and we poured a dram last night. Uh, he had a little kind of party, a gathering in his house, and it was by far the standout whiskey of the night. And it was up against a 23-year-old Clint Leash from a sherry butt. It was up against um, a, some really big Christmassy sherry monsters and things. But that Port Charlotte PC8 was, after it had been in that open bottle for at least two years, was wonderful, absolutely wonderful. So, yeah, any Port Charlotte I've tried, I've really enjoyed. Um, the only bad experience I've had is with that PC8 when we first opened it. So I wonder how much of that is my palate changing, and I wonder how much of it is uh, is is the is the whiskey changing in the glass. It's probably got a lot to do with both, right? Um. Well, the chat's rolling past a bit fast. John McGowan, hey John, nice to have you in. Hey Aquaviti, I'm going to Isla in February. Booked uh, a Bamore Gardener's Cottage for a week. Very good. Very lucky. Anybody done this trip at that time of year? So you're going in February. Um, I should, or should I stay in Glasgow till the summer? No, I, I think the only risk that you have, and it's a risk that happens at any time of the year with going to Isla, is the ferry crossing. I mean, the, the weather is, um, they don't get a lot of snow on Isla, and the temperatures, while it gets cold, especially when the wind's blowing hard, it tends not to be like an icy, crisp cold. Um, it's quite mild climate. It's more kind of stormy weather that they get with milder temperatures on the west coast. It's the ferry crossing that's risky, and it's providing you can get a ferry across, which you will do. It's the the service rate is very, the level is very good. Um, I would go in February. I've been in summer to Isla, and I've been in no, I've been in May um, to Isla, and I've been also in winter time in uh, November, and. Uh, to be honest, you're really not going there for the season. Uh, the season is incidental. You're you're not going to care what the weather's doing. You're really not. It's, uh, as long as you can get to the places that you want to go to. Um, it sounds like Bamore Gardner's Cottage. Is that the cottages that's actually in Bamore Distillery? That's where I stayed when I went in, on a November trip. It's a wonderful spot to stay right, right in the town of Bamore itself. Uh, in the distillery, um, you're going to have a blast, John, and I would not worry about it at all. Uh, are you from Glasgow, John? Are you from here? Uh, great shout on Deanston, Scott Monroe, saying the 12 and 18 are cracking drums. I'm glad you agree with me as well, Scott. Um, yeah, I found it to be just a, a revelation, an absolute revelation of a distillery. Um, Malton Monswamy saying PC5 was the best Port Charlotte by a mile. I didn't get to try the PC5. Would have been quite young back then as well. Reb, fantastic to see you in, Reb. Welcome, my friend. I know we've talked a lot. I know you've made some live streams in the past. I'm glad you made this one tonight. Um, he's saying, I have the Deanston Virgin 12 and 18, the exact same three that I have right now. My favorite is the 12-year-old. I wonder, is Whiskey Rover in? Is Jason in? Ah, wow. And he's, he's actually mentioned Deanston. Another Deanston convert. Um, I wonder, Whiskey Rover, if you can mention, do you know if that decenary edition that they brought out is still available at the distillery? Um, because a, a couple of weeks ago in the live stream, I kind of put out there that um, my wife had asked me what kind of whiskey I wanted, and she'd suggested that instead of getting me a selection of bottles, that she'd get me a really nice single bottle as a kind of gift thing. But all the bottles that I wanted, all the ones that I really wanted, were, were a lower value. Um, than I think what she was kind of going to gift to me. Um, so I was struggling to come up with something that, that I could have. Of course, I would have been very happy to have it, but very happy to drink it as well and very happy to share it. And that's kind of where my whiskey 
sweet spot tends to be. So if, once it starts to get into the two, three hundred pound bracket and above, it becomes a little bit of a ball and chain because I don't have the money where I can replace that regularly. Kind of that's a special bottle that has to be kind of kept under lock and key for special occasions. And the big thing for whiskey and me is to share it. I like to share it with folk when they come around to the house. I like to be able to give out samples and not really worry about it too much. And that Beanston caught my eye. So let's get over. If you know if they're still having that, uh, I couldn't make the trip up to the distillery on the run up to Christmas, but I think that's the missing whiskey jigsaw piece for me. Um, and in the end of a, a little bit, a little later in the stream, I will share what I ended up um, being gifted at Christmas. It was fabulous. Um, Jason Whiskey Wise is asking, "Have you tried the Deanston Bordeaux wine finish? It's phenomenal. I haven't, Jason. I have not." Um, I wonder if that's a distillery exclusive or maybe a travel exclusive or something. Uh, US Deanston 18 cognac finish. Wow. Yeah, they are doing a lot of finishes. I noticed that. I have, uh, last night I had an Oloroso, um, a 20 year old Oloroso at my friend's house. Um, it was wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Um, Okay, we're looking for a good January bottle. Any good Deanston recommendations beyond the core range? Well, I'll be able to tell you a bit more once I've actually tried that one I'm after. Um, but the guy that I mentioned earlier, Whiskey Rover, um, I know he's a bit of a Deanston fan. He mentioned it, um, commenting on me being a Deanston convert, which is true. Um, I would say that if, if Jason, uh, sorry, if Whiskey Rover is saying that it's a decent whiskey, um, then it's certainly worth a look, I would say. Tom is saying, Roy, I don't speak Scottish. I'll have a problem with the language on my trip. Um, I, I don't think so, Tom. I know you're just kidding there, but mostly we can make ourselves understood in English most of the time. <laughs> uh, Varian Viewpoint is asking me, hi, Varian Viewpoint, nice to have you in. Um, he's asking me, what kind of whiskey did you get for Christmas? Okay, I'll cover that now. Again, I broke it down and... Um, I got another bottle of my whiskey of the year, which is my whiskey of the year. And it's my whiskey of the year because it's a very good whiskey, but it's also my whiskey of the year because it takes me to a very specific place. Um, and uh, it's a limited edition, kind of a. So I asked for another bottle of that and I got that and I'll share that with you shortly. Um, I should have written this, these down. I was gifted um, two Lagavulin, a Cheetah, um, and Anok 24, and mm, a Deanston 12, and I don't remember a couple of others as well. I'll probably get to them throughout the stream. And that suits me more than saying getting a really nice three, four hundred pounds bottle because I get more whiskey, of course, but I think I get more enjoyment out of sharing whiskey. That's, that's the whole thing about about me was the, the thing that I enjoy about whiskey more than anything I would say is that is that how good it is at connecting people, how good a social glue it can be. Um, and that I feel good about getting more bottles for drinking rather than um, a single bottle for being precious about. Not that there's anything wrong with having a single bottle for being precious about, but I think you probably get my, my uh, my point there and if i remember the other ones as the stream goes on i'll share them with you i meant to write them down i really did i got about about eight bottles i was very very lucky this year um john mcgown saying yes is that you saying yes to being in glasgow i assume then john fantastic um yeah one of these times if if i'm ever out in town or something if we can hook up on social media or something we'll maybe say hello and we can talk about isla and planning your trip you're a lucky guy it's just a wonderful whiskey destination to, it's, a, it's a wonderful destination to go to but whiskey wise it's, it's really quite magical it really is eric gilbert isla barley 2000 was my favorite of the year so yeah they did the scottish and the isla barley and i think the general consensus was that the isla barley nudged the scottish but no sorry the scottish barley nudged the isla barley a wee bit um i, I didn't um, I certainly, if I tried either of those, I don't remember which, and I certainly didn't try them in contrast with each other, so I can't comment. Um, Tom is saying, yeah, I got that. Okay, good. So 
Reb is saying, I was very pleased with Ralphie's Whiskey of the Year. The Glen Cadam 15 is a cracking Highland malt. So there you go, Reb. That's another one that I got for Christmas. Um, I got two bottles of Glen Cadam 15. Um, and yes, it was an interesting call for Ralphie. And um, I've heard him speaking positively about Glen Cadam. Um, and I tried that Glen Cadam 15 uh, in town. And as soon as I tried it, I thought that's, I mean, it didn't completely blow me away. There was nothing so completely amazing about it, but for the money and for its natural presentation, uh, it's about 50 pounds. It's a 15 year old at 46%. Natural colors written on the bottle, until filtered is written on the bottle. Um, 50 year old age statement in place for 50 pounds is perfect. Um, it's decent value as well. So I bought a couple of those and I now noticed that it's gone out of stock on Master of Malt. Um, I'm not saying it's going to be out of stock for a long time. I don't think there needs to be a kind of, there's not going to be a rush on it or anything. But you never know because Ralphie is a bit of an influencer now. He's got like 100,000 subs. So I guess when he calls a whiskey of the year, there might be a strain on the supply chain for a little while. Um, but I was thinking of keeping one of my Glencadam 15s to run a, a, a bit of a giveaway, a competition in the new year. Uh, I'm not sure about that because I know I can run into a lot of trouble um, trying to ship it outside of the UK. Um, so don't hold me to that. But if I can manage that, if I can do that in some way, I'll come up with something. And um, I, I think it'll be a good giveaway, especially if it, if it becomes one of these bottles that are in demand. So it looks like the short, the little bit of feedback I got about the timing of this is is decent. Ah, uh, you seem to be fairly happy with it. And if I look, um, wow, that's the busiest it's ever been. Of there's 54 people in. That's amazing. Thank you, really, thank you. Um, so the timing seems to be okay. Another kind of sensitive issue that I wanted to bring up I wanted to talk about the channel and say that this year has been. Um, transformative for me. It's been wonderful. I went from being very coy and nervous about YouTube um, to absolutely loving it, loving the community that's building up there and loving being a part of that community as well and really enjoying the positive feedback I've had for the admittedly very um, limited content that I've actually put out there so far. Um, and I, you know, just out of curiosity, I did a little experiment in November and for uh, four weeks in November, I monetized the channel. So during November, anybody coming onto the channel um, and and viewing any of the videos would probably have been exposed to an ad at the start, not during the video, but just an ad at the start um, and maybe some footer ads or, or sidebar, sidebar ads or something. And I ran that monetization for 30 days. Now in November, I would have had maybe only four or 500 subs at that time. And for about, I think about, uh, I don't know how many views it would have been. I think it was about, I'm gonna say 13 to 14,000 views. I earned nine pounds from Google. So that's not life-changing money. It's not even enough to return any kind of costs that's involved in uh, producing videos and putting videos out on YouTube, but that's not why I do it. I do it because it's a creative outlet for me and whiskey and because I really enjoy that creative element. Um, I like to share whiskey and it's just another way for me to share whiskey. I really do enjoy it. And I don't think any YouTubers um, or not many of them, there's a few probably can earn some money out of, out of whiskey and YouTube. I think it's really difficult for for bloggers, for commenters, commentators, for writers, for anybody to make money. I think most of us are driven by the whiskey, by the passion for whiskey. But it made me realize that, okay, over the course of a year, I've got more subs now, so I've got more views per month, probably talking about I could earn 12 to 15 pounds, let's say, a month. And over the course of a year, that would get me a nice bottle of whiskey or two. So how do you feel, does it offend you when you watch YouTube and you have to sit through uh, six seconds of an ad at the start of a video, does it put you off? Uh, are you quite happy to often sit and watch the duration of that video? Would it offend you if some of your creators on YouTube um, were to run ads? Uh, I, I know a lot of them do, and a lot of them have come to perhaps not rely on them, but maybe enjoy a little kickback, a little bit of revenue. Um, because 
from my perspective, when I'm watching YouTube, I don't care about the ads. I don't care about sitting through six seconds and then skipping it. And if it's an ad that intrigues me, like a trailer for an upcoming movie or whatever it might be, I'm quite happy to sit through the ad and, and let the channel enjoy any kind of two or three cents that gets thrown at them. Um, for that, I, I just don't care. So it would be nice to see um, some feedback how you feel about that. Um, most YouTube creators now rely more on uh, what I think is a wonderful concept, and that's Patreon, where they set up a Patreon channel and these people come on because they've probably realized that they're watching more whiskey YouTube than they're watching Netflix or something. So so they realize in order to protect that, in order to encourage that content that they're, they're enjoying to be to keep being produced, um, you know, the Patreon, a lot of the channels, I support quite a few channels that I enjoy um, through Patreon. I think it's a fantastic uh, concept. And also through being a Patreon, uh, through being a patron rather, you, you enjoy some uh, extra layers of access and th some things. And some channels are very good at giving you extra stuff. Some channels um, eh, don't do it so much. It just depends on the type of channel, the type of um, content and things like that. But, but it can be a very, very cool thing and it can help you become much more connected. And that's one of the most powerful things about YouTube is the fact that you're not just consuming uh, on-demand content like on Netflix or TV or whatever it might be, but you're actually in a scenario where you can uh, interact a lot more. Although I'm not doing a lot of that right now. I'm sitting here monologuing at you. But I'm curious as to your opinion about advertising, about monetizing the channel. Um, and I'd kind of said to myself that when I got to 1,000 subs, um, I might consider monetizing and just see what happens. But given that I'm not going to actually earn significant money out of it, it might be um, something that I would only do if I thought that YouTube would promote my videos and give me more views and more exposure because they are making money out of it as well. Or, you know, I don't know. I'm just, I'm a bit torn on, on the whole idea. I did it in November just as an experiment. And I would love to know if you guys actually care. Uh, so now that I've thrown uh, that out there, let's see. Okay. The Whiskey Revolution malted in Montreal saying, the Rev is saying, good hashtag. I wonder what you mean, Swami, the Whiskey Revolution. Triple cap. I've only met Roy a few times, but I consider him a great friend. His wife and kids are great too. Cheers. You're a gentleman, Walt. Thank you very much. That's really nice of you to say that. And I hope that our plans for next year can actually take effect. Um, that would be nice if I could see you in Scotland again. And I don't care where it is. If we get to go off and escape somewhere, that would be brilliant too. Um, Salt Harrison agreed. Glen Caram 10 can be varied, but most of the time, deliciously creamy biscuit yeast cake. Yeah, it's quite light. I found Glen Caram a wee bit like a maltier, slightly more floral kind of Glen Goyne type uh, flavor profile to me. I've not compared them actually, but that's kind of what it reminded me of. Um, the 15 is is a richer experience, absolutely. Um, Aquavita is saying, is Ben Nevis good enough to buy in the US? If we can get a bottle from Single Cast Nation. Okay, well, Single Cast Nation, they're an indie, and um, I don't have much knowledge or experience on, on experience of what those guys put together. I think they're mostly focused in the States, if, I'm, if, if I know rightly, if I, if I understand correctly. Um, and Ben Nevis is not a distillery I'm very familiar with. I've had a couple of the Revs got a bottle of Ben Nevis that's okay. It's nothing great. I've tried a couple of independent Ben Nevis. One of them was foul. One of them was absolutely awful, but it was an independent and it was uh, experimental casking. Um, but it's not a distillery that I'm very familiar with, so I can't comment too much. Um, I know it's difficult for you, Tom, because sometimes it's difficult to get a dram or a sample or a taste first. But sorry, I couldn't help you any more there. Uh, let's see. Amy is saying, I watch the ads. Okay, Jez is saying, no problem, please earn a little. Well, she's saying, I don't like adverts. I'm not offended, though. I'm of the similar opinion, Welsh. Um, it's when you see the same adverts time and time again, it, it starts to get a wee bit frustrating, and you, but you can skip. 
Swami saying each to their own, I don't do it, but don't judge those who do. I know that you and I have spoken about it in the past, Swami. And another problem, and I guess that people that don't create for YouTube don't really understand this, but another problem what can happen when you monetize is that you start to get a lot of heat from YouTube about the, how appropriate your content is. And you can attract um, attention and things that is just an, an ache that you don't need. Um, now, if you don't really care if you're ambivalent about monetization, it doesn't matter if they flag one of your videos as not being appropriate for advertisers, um, yeah, then you just have to roll with it and you don't get any any pennies thrown at you for it. But um, what is frustrating is that they can flag it as inappropriate and run ads on it regardless. So YouTube earn, but they just don't pay you, it seems to be. Um, and that can frustrate people, so it adds a bit of stress that you don't really need in things. But I don't really care. Um, I'm choosing not to monetize right now. And if I monetize and they don't pay me on half the videos, you know, what's the big deal? I, I don't, if I'm not offending the viewership, I don't really care so much. Uh, Mark Wilson. Hi, Mark. It's a new name, I think, to me. It's nice to welcome you in. He's saying he's cool with ads. Uh, 62 and growing. 64. Guys, this is fabulous. It's just me, myself. Sorry, I don't have anybody cooler than me to, to have in to keep you entertained tonight. So as long as you're happy chatting amongst yourselves and listening to my monologue, I'm okay with that. Um, but 64, that's by far the, the, the most that we've had on a feed. Um, ads don't bother me. This is varying viewpoint. Ads don't bother me. Nothing wrong with a little kickback to help replenish your drinking library, yes. Um, sometimes the ads are better than the programs, Walt. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, the ads have, have certainly got better production value than than most. Jez is saying, uh, Roy, just do it. Um, up, Swami. So it seems like a lot of people are, let's get over saying, I don't care, we don't run ads on malt. Well, that's true, you don't. Um, please turn on the ads. It actually helps your videos being promoted a bit better by YouTube. Um, yeah, I've heard that. I've heard that. And that's one of the reasons I experimented in November, Jason. And um, when I switched off the monetization, I was expecting a dip in traffic and views and things. And the analytics suite on YouTube is really quite comprehensive. The detail that you can see is fantastic. And there was nothing that happened in December to suggest that YouTube were not promoting my videos as much as in the past. And in fact, December has been far and away uh, the biggest and busiest month I've had. Now, that that could simply be just because the, the channel's gaining a bit of momentum now, and um, that was going to happen anyway. Um, but there is a theory out there that, yes, if you do monetize and you do run ads, you get a lot more exposure, and your videos are up the, up the pecking order a wee bit. Curious. Thomas Saini runs Adblock, but don't see your ads, but would give you super chat donations on Patreon to make up for it. Thank you, Tom. And I know, Tom, you are a very generous guy in that in that respect. Um, that's appreciated. I run Adblock as well, but I still see YouTube native ads from and with inside, inside the YouTube environment. Um, now on to the main course of the evening, Laga Distillery only 2015 versus Laga 19 for Shield 2014. You're a lucky bugger, Hoagie. Connor, nice to see you, Connor. Um, I don't think I've said hello to you tonight. It's wonderful to see you in. Um, will there be a quiz tonight? <laughs> um, well, do you know what? I One of the reasons I was a wee bit late and not very well prepared is that I did put together uh, some questions. I had a few questions done already and I just filled in the gaps. So there, there are quiz questions here. If we have time and you guys have got the appetite and somebody's willing to step up and offer themselves, I've had somebody um, that's kind of, let's say, not fully committed, but they are warm to the idea. So there's somebody and he is here tonight. Um, but we have a show in the UK called uh, Eggheads and what it is is that you've got a panel of really, really quite expert quiz type people up against just kind of regular quiz teams and the regular quiz teams come in to compete against these eggheads. And um, unless two guys from the, the, or two people, sorry, from the viewership right now put their names forward for the quiz and are happy to kind of do a little fun kind of head to head together. Um, 
if I have to kind of use pull my joker and use the guy that I've warmed up, it would be a bit like going up against the whiskey egghead. Um, I'm not going to say any more than that because I don't want to offend the guy, but he said, you know, he'll give it a try if, if I need somebody to participate in a quiz. So it's down to you guys. If you're happy just chatting, let's go with the chat. But if you really enjoy the quiz, then just throw the comments in, uh, feed me and guide me and, I'll, and we'll do a quiz. And we'll do it what we've, we didn't do it last week. Last week was a bit more loosely policed. I wasn't trying to synchronize people to send in their answers at the exact same time. But tonight we would do that, especially if it's two people just from the chat competing against each other. Nobody needs to join me on video on the broadcast or audio even. It'd just be in the chat and I would just kind of keep score of two of you. And that means that everybody can participate. Everybody can join in and keep their own score as well. So yeah, let me know. Ryab is saying, were you drinking water or was that New Make Spirit? Reb, it's water. And I'm getting through a lot of water just now because I'm enjoying a lot of uh, being off work. It just makes it so much easier just to kind of have a dram. And so, yeah, I'm drinking a lot of water just now. And that's water, not least because I'm talking a lot as well. Hoyt, is, Hoyt fantastic to see you in. Good to see you, my friend. And Mark, uh, Mark Broder from the Scotch for Dummies. Fantastic for you to join me, Mark. Um, wonderful to see you in as well. Hoyt is saying that he doesn't mind ads if it helps get more views. Um, uh, Mark has seen not been Rinus, right? So that's interesting. People are kind of like, eh, we don't really care. I get the impression that I wouldn't lose a lot of, um, I wouldn't frustrate people too much if I monetized. And I would be quite happy sharing with you and letting you know exactly what that actually means in terms of kickback, because I was always curious as to how much YouTube actually paid back. Um, it's not, it's not hellish much, believe me. Certainly for a tiddler, tiny little channel like like Aquavita, it doesn't um, like nine pounds in the month of November. What do you think of the Scotch Test Dummies parody? <laughs> um, the Scotch Test Dummies parody of me? Do you mean Nick? I thought it was wonderful. Um, I let you know a little secret that they shared with me that they wanted to do that ahead of time. Um, and they said to me that if there was any risk of me being offended, that they were not going to run it. Um, but they just wanted to have a bit of fun. And um, Scott came up with the idea of doing a, a parody video of me and was happy to go out and kind of act the goat at the recycling bin. And um, I mean, it's Scott. It's the Scotch Test Dummies. There's nothing not to trust there. So I was very happy with it. Although before I saw the video, I was a wee bit uncomfortable. I didn't know what was going to happen. And, but in the end, I actually provided the soundtrack and things to them. Um, and on the Sunday night when that went live, I had 809 subscribers. Um, by the Wednesday night, after that video went out, I had 879 subscribers. So to answer your question, Nick, I'm indebted to Scott and the Scotch Test Dummies for that parody video, and I think it's very, very funny. Let me ask you, Nick, what did you think of it? What did you think? Uh, Tom is saying, Roy, Swami... And Rob educated me last night that if any profanity is used on stream or in the chat, your video will be demonetized. So please let your viewers know to respect your work. I think that people are starting to realize that the way that you behave in real life should really be the way that you behave online as well. And if you kind of if you're using language and behavior that you're not comfortable using in polite company, then I mean, yeah, I would I would prefer people to kind of stay polite. Um, I don't mind the occasional swear word and things like that. And um, perhaps if you're getting demonetized for that, yeah, we don't want that. But how can you police that in a live chat? There's no way you can stop people in a live chat using bad language. There's just no way. A nice, quiet um, chat feed like this, uh, it's probably quite easy. Um, but some of the big channels with the chat is just simply flying past and people are just kind of, shouting profanities at each other sometimes and there's just no way you can penalize a channel for that i just um but if you're using profanity in the content that you create if you're being rude if you're being abusive if you're being um i, I don't think there's any place for that and i think that you shouldn't be able to monetize that type of content definitely 67 watching wow jess that's amazing that's amazing. It's a good time of year to do it, perhaps. Um, 
Tom is saying, the money you and other YouTube whiskey streamers save me with your educational work. I like to pass it along back to you. Well, that's that's very good because that's kind of the way I used to when I was on the other side, when I wasn't creating content for YouTube, I felt indebted to the channels that were entertaining me and whether they were educating me or whether they were just being funny and um, or whether I was just able to sit down and simply enjoy a whiskey with them. I got a lot out of that. And the reason that I became a patron of so many channels is because, you know, even though you're only given like a dollar, um, you feel like you want to encourage that content to keep being created. And if each channel over the years that they continue to build their their channel and their, their uh, content, if they, if they build those patrons as well, a dollar a time or a couple of dollars a time, whatever it may be, that is a real motivator for them, I think. And it gets to the point that when you can um, maybe not consider it um, a way to replace your day job, let's say, but a way to make your hobby become uh, uh, not profitable, but self-sustainable so that you can afford to buy the whiskies that people actually want to see you try and, and they want to hear your opinions about. As an example. Uh, Reb is saying he was bitterly disappointed with the Glencarum 21. Never tried it, Reb. I find it very alcohol upon first open. You don't expect that from a 21-year-old. It's not the experience I had with the 15, Reb. Um, but yeah, sometimes some expressions do let you down. I totally want to be a whiskey egghead, Aquafiti. That's from Jason Whiskey Wise. Yeah. yeah, me too. But... Um, I still have uh, the whiff of the noob about me. Connor Strang, uh, what did I want as I did last time. Yes, you did very, very well, Connor, last time. You did brilliantly well. Um, so is there, is there anybody up for the quiz? Some uh, Yap is shouting. Hi, Yap. Good to see you in. And Jason, quiz, quiz, please. Well, let me ask you then, Yap and Whiskey Jason in Germany, are either of you willing to step up and participate in the quiz? Because um, you don't. all you have to do is answer the questions in the chat. Um, just hit enter when I synchronize you to hit enter at the same time and I'll keep your scores. That's all you need to do. Um, Scott is a great drunk. Yes, he really was a great drunk. So who was it that asked me what I thought um, about that parody? Thomas pointing out 959 subs getting close. Yes, it, it is. It is getting close. I forget who uh, who had asked me. Nick, it was you that asked. Yep, it got me to your channel. Well, there you go. Fantastic, Nick. Fantastic to have you. And uh, yeah, you and a lot of other guys came my way because of um, because of that video by Scott. And I think it did okay for Scott as well. I think it, it he got decent traffic on it. People appreciated it. He got a lot of interaction. Um, so, you know, that's the great thing about collaboration and it's a great thing about that kind of being connected and that sense of community. It's, um, it works both ways. It's not kind of it's very rarely a, a one way street. Uh, and I agree that with Tom, that Scott does, does play a very uh, good drunk. Okay. The worst whiskey of the year. Okay, right. STD parody was great, Hoyer. Yes, it was. It was really good. <clears throat> and Hoagie has seen the lag of a shield 2014 for the second time. Must be my favorite Isle of Malt yet. Wow. Next to what they pulled out of the warehouse tour. I would agree with you, Hoagie. Um, the best lag villain I've had is, well, the best whiskey I've had is whiskey in a warehouse. And we're whiskey in a Dunnage warehouse, right? Any Dunnage warehouse. Excuse me, but the best are. Uh, Lagavulin I had was absolutely in the Lagavulin warehouse. And my whiskey of the year is Lagavulin. I bought this for myself back in, I don't know when the special releases came out, September or whenever it came out. And I put it in the cupboard and I said, I'll open that at Christmas time. But I'd heard so many good things about it. Um, Phil from Whiskey Wednesday was raving about it, absolutely loved it. A few other guys that I'd spoke to said it was one of the best special releases a cast strength 12-year-old that they'd come out with. So eventually I just went downstairs and opened it, and I was just transported back to the Lagavulin's warehouse. So when I talk about it, it, you know, it took me to a place. I'm talking a wee bit about that. But I'm also talking about a time in 2009 when Lagavulin 
it was responsible for transforming me from just a guy who enjoyed whiskey and drank whiskey to somebody who actively wanted to study it and learn everything I could learn about it. Um, and it was a, a flavor experience that exists inside this year's expression, this 2017 special release. Um, and I understand what I'm saying here. I'm sitting here saying, that, you know, my whiskey of the year is a special release, limited edition, 90 pounds for a 12 year old. I understand all of that, but it's cast strength and it's a Lagavulin single malt, which um, in any packaging and in any, any branding, 90 pounds is good for a cast strength, 12 year old Lagavulin. Um, and I think it just always, was to show that Lagavulin 16 re remains a pretty good value prospect most of the time. I know that it varies a bit in terms of quality, but um, I think it's pretty good right now. It's pouring very well right now. But I'm telling you, this 12-year-old is just, uh, the flavor's there, the Lagavulin flavor's there, um, that, that smoke, uh, the medicinal notes, the, the it's all intact. But this expression is coming with a really smooth, creamy texture that surprised me. Um, Phil from Whiskey Wednesday said it was silken, I get that. For me, it's it's creamy, it's bordering on waxy in, in some respects. And you can see I opened this just a couple of weeks ago. And it's become, uh, I mean, I, I must have 20 or 30 aisles open right now, but this is the one that I can't reach past. I'm loving it so much. So I was fortunate enough, one of the Christmas bottles I got from my wife, she managed, uh, to, she had some time in order to go and get me another uh, Lagavulin 12, so I've got another one of these. The Whiskey Rev's coming down to enjoy me this weekend, and I can't wait to share it with him because I'm sure he's going to love it as well. But for me, this year's special release, Lagavulin 12, is the whiskey that stopped me in my tracks. I just, you can see how much I've got through. I absolutely love it. And yes, I've shared that, I've, I've given that out to people, but the majority of that bottle has been enjoyed by me. Um, Okay, I've learned so much from Roy's videos and Ralph was just, and that's wonderful to hear. Um, Santa Cruzen, hi Santa Cruzen, it's great. Did we have a cusser on board? Oh, I don't know. I don't know if we did, Santa, I'm not sure. But it's fantastic to welcome you in. Um, you're in the west coast of the States, so I know um, you're quite a bit behind us, but uh, good to see you, my friend. Really good to see you. And we have similar love of things um, powered by internal combustion as well. I think we've both got a soft spot. Well, I certainly have for air-cooled um, classic cars. And I saw that uh, some pictures you'd posted um, that I appreciated. Very good. Um, set up a Patreon page. Well, I'll think about that, Jez. I will think about that in the new year. Certainly. Um, if I get uh, people that are willing to to join in. Um, Tom is saying that he's, he agrees as well. Um, that would be wonderful. It's a very good measure of the content that you're putting out as well, because if pe people are willing to watch your content, that's a good metric to measure. Um, if people are willing to subscribe, wonderful. Uh, if they like, um, and if you get interaction from that, great. But when people are actually willing to step up and become a patron, that says a lot, and that's very uh, confidence building. Um, and it tells you directly that people are enjoying what you're putting together. Um, so yes, I, I would consider that absolutely. Um, not least that it helps me, um, because it's not just the cost of the whiskey. The cost of whiskey is, I don't review whiskey. I don't sit here and open an expression and review a whiskey. Never say never. I'm not saying I'll never do that, but I don't do that just now. And the, the content that I want to create next year is not focused on that. Um, but just to produce a YouTube video that's decent quality, you need hardware, you need, I mean, it does, it, it, it takes a lot of um, investment in that. But more than anything, even if you were just doing it with your phone and a, a pin on mic or something, the time that it takes, the time that it takes you to sit down and come up with ideas and then present those ideas in a, in a way that you hope people can consume it and enjoy it, um, and then edit it um, and and research it before you, you even shoot it. And, um, it all takes a lot, a lot of time. Um, and to be um, appreciated for that and to get the feedback, the interaction, and the subscribers is great. Um, and somebody to to get to the point that they're willing to Patreon you as well, to Patreon you is just, I think it really does say a lot and it helps make it all so much more worthwhile. Uh, Jez is saying, do a video about your collection. 
you will get loads of views and subs. Do you know what I would do there, Jez? If I had a Patreon, a, or a, if I did set that up next year, and I don't want to talk about this too much in this video, I would probably do that. I would probably do a patron type hangout. Um, and I would literally do a live stream like this, but I would do it on a tablet or on the phone and I would take the machine downstairs and I would literally sit in front of the the cabinets and say, well, what would you want to look at? Would you want to see? Would you want me to talk about? And I would do that for patrons. And that would be a good... Um, I, I know that collection videos are very popular. People like to see other people's collections, understand why I like watching collection videos. Um, but I think that, that might be what I would do there. So, yeah. But it's a, it's a good idea. It definitely is a good idea. Okay. We have 72 people in this live stream, which is why I'm not keeping up with these comments. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming and hanging out with me. It makes cold nights in Glasgow so much more fun. Um, yeah, so I've covered kind of the the topics that I wanted. But one thing I would I do want to share, just before I get off the YouTube thing, everybody that's in here right now and everybody that's watching and everybody that's interacting right now understand this, and I apologize if I'm preaching to the converted, but it means a lot to a creator, whether it's a whiskey creator or anybody. If you watch that video, if you interact in some way, if you can leave a comment, wonderful. If you hit the like button, all you have to be is be signed in uh, under your Google account or whatever to hit that like button and just leave a kind of mark or a footprint behind to say that you appreciated that in some way. If you really enjoyed the video, then of course a like and a comment and things. Um, and if you didn't, if you didn't enjoy the content, um, it's okay to hit the, the down thumb, the dislike. YouTube actually enjoys that. It likes to see it. It measures it as a metric of interaction. Um, and providing that somebody's not getting like 100 thumbs down and zero thumbs up, um, it, you know, there's nothing really negative against the channel or anything. So thumbs down doesn't cause any real... Um, I mean, I don't like to see thumbs down. I am always always want to find the person and say, why? <laughs> but um, it's fine to do that. But it's also, if you're going to give it a thumbs down, some uh, constructive reason why you did that. Um, I can't listen to you, even if it's, okay, don't be rude, but um, leave some feedback. It's really, really valuable to us. It helps us a lot as creators just to get that reassurance, but it helps us work inside uh, the YouTube um, architecture as well and trying to have our content found amongst all the other noise that exists out there, all the other content that's there. Um, so yeah, Mark is saying I need an intern. Yeah, you want to help out? Well, I've got the whiskey rev. He's probably busy beavering away in the background and he's reading all the comments. And um, if I move to the side, maybe the rev has been feeding me things in the chat. Oh, he has been. Crap. Sorry, rev. I, I blocked your chat. So I'll move that there. I did employ something of an intern and I've just completely ignored him what he's doing. I've been because I was doing it solo tonight, I thought that I'd be able just to to hang out with you guys and chat with you, but the chat's gone by so fast. Okay. Rafael Ortega asked a while back, last whiskey I had was from a local company that sourced a NAS blend from Scotland and finished it in Malbec casks. Turned out to be pretty good. What do you think wine casks add to whiskey? I think I'm in the camp that doesn't enjoy a lot of wine finishes, but there has been some uh, wine finished whiskies that I've tried and absolutely adored. I bought a Linkwood this year from the Creative Whiskey Company that was a port finish. Um, I've got a couple of kind of port flavored whiskies downstairs or port finished, but I tried a Long Row Red finished in a Malbec cask this year and it was wonderful. It was one of the best whiskies I've, I've tasted this year. Um, I You can't buy it anywhere. I haven't been able to find it. I don't know where that bottle exists. Um, but I tried a Malbec Long Row that was just wonderful. Wine finishes, to my palate, have to be done well. Everything has to be done well, but it has to be done very well, I think. Um, wine can often be super short finished, very dry, leave a lot of bitter notes in the aftertaste. Um, so that everything that you've been enjoying about the whiskey up until that point is suddenly stripped away by a poor finish. Um, 
whiskey over cognac finish is the u.s exclusive uh that's uh, uh deanston he's talking about the deanston that makes sense that's why i've never seen it or tried it mark broda need you to put together your sms must-haves from the last year <laughs> wow yeah i'll tell you what i'll do with you mark is the ones that i've picked up the ones that i've tried by the dram um, I'll share them with you and let them, let you know to keep your eye out for them because I know that they're they're cl they're splitting the batches, aren't they? And they're putting some aside for seven fifty mil bottlings for for the states, so you guys get them a few months downwind of us. Um, I'll bear that in mind, Mark. Definitely. Feedback and adverts as folk don't mind. No one is offended by it. So there you go. Perhaps from January. You'll have to suffer ads on a Covite. We'll run it for a while and see how it goes. And if you find that they're frustrating, let me know. Uh, please try the Glen Caram 18. John McGowan is saying, you will not be disappointed. Yeah, the 15 has certainly made me curious. Uh, Rev, when you come down at the weekend, I'm looking forward to sharing the Glen Caram 15 with you as well. See what you think. Um, Eric Renfer. Welcome in, Eric. That's another new name. Good to see you. He's saying the Scotch Test Dummies parody led me here. That's wonderful. And I noticed that you subscribe to the channel as well, and thank you for that. Um, Brandon Lee, I'm up for it. You're up for the quiz, Brandon. Is that correct? Um, Brandon's also saying it's been a couple of years since I had my last casting 12-year-old Lager Villain. So if you're up for it, um, we're already at quarter to 11. How could I have been on here talking for an hour? Okay, so what I've noticed about the metrics, and I'll be honest with everyone, the show seems to do quite well, and it starts off, um, you know, it shoots up quite quite quickly, and it gets to its round about its peak traffic, and um, within the first fifteen or twenty minutes, maybe within the first half hour, and it bobbles along at quite a strong rate. But then, as I go over um, towards the quiz, the traffic dips, and I took that as feedback. Um, that people kind of stay for the chat and hanging out and things, maybe the guest and like to hear what the guest has got to say, but when it gets to the, the quiz, they kind of check out. But that's completely the opposite from the direct feedback I get. I get people saying to me, I really enjoyed the quiz. I did the quiz after on the replay. I did the quiz and I scored this and it was great. Um, so the, the, I'm not getting anybody coming back and saying I'm enjoying the live streams, Roy, but not the quiz. Nobody has said that, but I'm getting a lot of people kind of dropping off and it may just be because it's getting to the end and they smell that it's getting to the end and they kind of disconnect a wee bit and I completely understand that. But if I can have two participants who's willing to stand up and say they'll do the quiz, I've got the 10 questions here. Um, similar theme as previous quizzes. So yeah, I'm up for it if you guys are as well, if you think that's going to be interesting. Um, I guess what happens is the people that are willing to participate in the quiz love it and stay for that. And the people that are watching, that don't have a keyboard in front of them, they're not involved in the live chat, maybe they think, oh, this is a quiz I'm going to dip out now. Maybe that's what's happening. So, well, we've had an hour of, of kind of chat and things. I've not covered most of the topics that I wanted to cover, but it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm happy to do the quiz if you guys are. Um, Justin is saying, I'd love to know how many bottles you guys have in your collection. I started in October and I have seven different bottles now. Justin, you'll find that that explodes very, very quickly. Um, when the Whiskey Rev and I started getting together every week, I had about 30 to 40 bottles um, at any one time, and it was always changing, and I would finish them off and get new ones. But I was running about 30 to 40, but um, I hesitate to admit on a live stream. But my wife sees my whiskey collection. She knows what's there, but I've probably got Comfortably over 100 to 120 open. Maybe more now. It's been a long time since I've counted. And then a, a bunch more sealed, waiting to be opened. Um, and I'm buying a lot because, you know, I'm realizing that a lot of the whiskies that I really enjoy, if I wait until I've got space in the cabinet for them, I'm going to miss the opportunity to get them. So I'm buying them. You know, ultimately 17, I've just bought a couple of because for that very reason. Um, a lot of the, of the independent bottlings and things and the special editions. And I'm just grabbing them because I know I like them and I want them to be there. So there's some kind of sitting there just waiting for me to open. Hmm. Uh, Whiskey in the Six, Roy, would you be able to recommend a book every Scotch drinker must have? Yes, that's very easy. But it depends. 
if you're talking about like a fact-based book, if you're talking about just kind of keeping up to date with whiskey and things, Scotch specifically, of course, it would be this, the Malt Whiskey Yearbook. This is never far out of reach because always things pop into your head. And this is a really good reference book, uh, Rob. I would say that this is a must have and I buy this every year. And I really enjoy the editorial stuff in here as well. I, I love the industry comment. Um, I love the little bits and pieces and I love the data section at the end. It's a fantastic source for quiz questions. And um, this is a good book. But I'd say that if I was to recommend kind of a more whimsical book, um, uh, I don't know off the top of my head, there's a book by Charles McLean called uh, Charles McLean's Whiskey Miscellany. And um, he does Wikipedia and he does uh, lots of different uh, whiskey books. But this one's a really quite small, compact book. Um, some of it is probably needing a bit of a refresh, but it's still pretty much up to date and it's it's good uh, fact-based read that's got a lot of fun in it as well and cool stories. So yeah, off the top of my head, that would be the book recommendations. Really quite good. Uh, Justin is saying, have you had Glenmorangie Nectar Door? Yes, I have. I think that's the short term finish. I got some for Christmas. Yeah, I enjoy it. And I think that um, not being a huge fan of a lot of stuff coming out of Glenmorangie Glen in recent years, uh, you know, the core range of the finished stuff that they have, you know, they have the Nectar Door, they have the La Santa, they have the Quinta Ruban, um, but they're all aged. They all have a nice age statement on there, all 12 years. So it's like the Glenmorangie original, basically, that, that's then finished in a, in a wine cask or whatever it may be, a rum cask. And then, um, yeah, it's it's really decent whiskey and I hope you're enjoying it. Let me know what you think of it, Justin. It's I think it's a... A decent, I mean, it's very tempered. It's not like some of the wine finishes that you that's available. It's the wine is is quite restrained. The the sauterne element, I would say, and to my palate, seems to be is quite restrained. Quite enjoy it. Okay. Peat smoke and spirit by I've not read that one, Eric. Eric, wait. I caught some of your live show um, with Swami last week. Uh, wonderful to welcome you in. It's fantastic to see you here for the first time. Um, it's good to have you. And I think um, I have to thank you for subscribing to me also this week. Thank you very much. Um, but I've not read that book, Pete Smoke and Spirit. I've seen it. Uh, Raw Spirit by Ian Banks is a great read. Yes, I've, that's been recommended to me as well. I think the Whiskey Rev recommended that to me too. Um, a lot of books that I enjoy about whiskey has come from the Whiskey Rev. Some of the whiskey books I actually own and have here belong to the Whiskey Rev. Uh, McLean and McCannell's The Illicit Distilling and Smuggling of Whiskey. A great historical read recommended by Russell. Fantastic to have you in again, Russell. Um, that's another good recommendation. And we've got a Stuart Peel in as well. Stuart, that's another new name. Nice to have you, my friend. Um, and Malt Musings, nice to see you in here, Malt Musings. I know exactly who you are, and it's fantastic to welcome you in on the live. I loved Ian Buxton's Whiskeys Galore. Yes, I'm halfway through that, and the anecdote side of that book is very good. Um, there's lots of good, he kind of does it distillery by distillery, gives you a bit of history, but wraps it up in kind of anecdotes and things. Um, Charles McLean recommended that to Roy and I when we met him, need to get it. Uh, that's uh, the Whiskey Rev. Uh, replying to Russell, is that the one he recommended? We were the Rev, the Rev and I were fortunate to um, to meet Charles McLean uh, this year in November, and he was just an absolute gentleman. Just I could have spent a, a long time with him. Connor said, "Roy, did you get my second email?" Hey, Connor, no, I'm not sure I did, my friend. Um, when did you send it? I'll try and I'll try and look out for it. Um, my name is Whiskey is New, and it's an incredible coffee table opus, not cheap. Okay, I've not heard that, that one, Rover. Who's, who's, who did that one, I wonder? Um, okay, so do we have two people or one person up for doing the quiz? Hoggy's seen the World Atlas of Whiskey, yeah. Justin is leaving us. All right, everyone, i got to drive home now. It's been awesome. Thank you for responding to my comments. You're very welcome, Justin. 
It'd be good to see you again, and uh, I'll try to remember how to pronounce your surname as Saginus. Um, it'd be fantastic to see you in here next time. Thanks for joining us. Just after I got your reply. Okay, so I have to be honest, Connor, what's happening recently, and this is becoming a thing, is that I'm actually struggling to keep up with the communication because it's on YouTube. It's on a direct message through Twitter and YouTube, um, through Instagram. Um, through email and things. I do try my absolute best, but I realize that some days when I'm super busy at home, I can be delinquent by a few days. So bear with me. Um, I apologize if I haven't uh, responded to you. And if you need to give me a polite nudge, um, I will take no offense at all. So please we go. Go right ahead. So we have uh, Whiskey Jason from Germany. I am willing. Fantastic. And Brandon Lee, who asked already, is again confirmed he's up for the quiz. So my backup guy, who I spoke to earlier on a direct message, you are off hire. I hope that's okay with you. I would absolutely love to have you in doing the quiz, um, but you would be a heavyweight, I think, and it would be tough um, for anybody I know to, to take you in the quiz. But there's there's Whiskey Jason. He's a whiskey guy. Whiskey Jason's got a channel in Germany. He does a, a, a German-speaking channel, and he does an English channel. Where you find the time for that, Jason, is quite amazing. And Brandon Lee, absolutely, will take your names, and you will be the guys kind of up against each other, just in terms of, you know, measuring a score, nothing more than that. Um, that's going to take the 10 questions. And I'll try and get through them a little bit quicker since I'm not having to kind of interact with um, a, guest this, a guest this week. And then if my voice holds up to the end, we can kind of cover another couple of quick things before we close. Okay. Okay. What to do for the quiz this time, and everybody can participate, is I'm going to ask a question. Um, the delay doesn't really matter because it's only me that's involved this time. But when I ask a question, please don't answer and hit the enter straight away. Type the answer in and hold off on hitting enter. When I say send, I'll just go three, two, one, send. Everybody hit send at the same time. And I'll look out for Brandon, um, Brandon's answer and also Whiskey Jason's answer. And that'll be the ones I take. And then I can comment on other questions and things, other answers that are coming in from you guys, excuse me, in general. If that's okay, we'll go right ahead. I'm gonna just look at my friend, the Whiskey Rev. Uh, does that sound okay to you, Rev, what I've just said? Is there anything that I'm delinquent in that I should cover before the quiz? You can just nod or shake your head. Oh, okay, I get the green light from the Rev, okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, it is saying Ralphie should do a book. He absolutely should. He absolutely should. It's curious that Ralphie, a guy who's doing content from his Mike's Bothy, probably has more leverage than any of the producers' marketing departments, right? Okay. Good. Fantastic, we're ready to go on the quiz. So Brandon, if you're ready, just type in the answer. When I give you a three, two, one countdown, you hit enter. Same for everyone, if you also hit enter at the same time, then there's, we're not feeding each other and things. And it's really cool when all the answers just pour in at the same time. We've got 72 people watching this stream, so depending on how many participate in the quiz, it might get a bit crazy, but I've got the Rev helping out as well. So question one, there were three prominent announcements in October of 2017 concerning revivals of closed distilleries. Now I'm talking about uh, prominent announcements in October. They were Rosebank, Port Ellen, and one other distillery. What is the other distillery? Now just type the answer in, don't hit enter. I'll give you a second or two to, to type it in. And I could talk at length about this announcement because it got some negative press when it was announced. But to me, there's just, it's like a, a whiskey fan's dream come true. Why pour money into a Greenfield site or a new distillery or when you've got these three huge hitters available to, to bring back to life? And there's a bunch of other ones that are kind of valid as well in, in that respect. 
Okay. After three, two, one, send in your answers. Go. <clears throat> they, um, yeah, they made a lot of whiskey fans very happy when they made these announcements. Okay. Newt is correct. Brandon Lee has got it correct, but we're waiting on Whiskey Jason. The answer coming in. Is it coming in? No answer from Whiskey Jason. I guess if you didn't know, Jason, I'd be surprised. If you didn't know, everybody's saying Brora. Tom R. saying Bowie was wrong. Uh, he said Port Charlotte. Um, well, Port Charlotte um, was once a distillery, but it's now a brand from Brook Laddie. So Jason's, did I miss Jason's answer? Oh, he has said, he said he doesn't know. It was Brora, Jason. Brora's the other closed distillery that's making a comeback. Um, they reckon that they're going to start producing spirit in 2020. And it's wonderful news for everybody that knows and loves just how good spirit can be out of that, well, Clinleash and Brora. Okay, so Brandon, well done for getting the first one right. Question two. Which 200th anniversary limited release from 2016 has now since in 2017 been announced to take a permanent fixture in the distillery's core range? So type the answer in and I'll give you a countdown. So in 2016, to celebrate a distillery's 200th year, they released what we, be what we were led to believe would be a limited release. Um, what was that? Because it was announced in 2017 that it would join the distillery's core range and it has done that. Three, two, one, enter your answers. This is, um, I can understand why people were like, oh, you know, um, about this announcement, but I was very pleased to hear this as well because I loved the expression, I enjoyed it a lot. And they're all pouring in. Uh, Lagavulin 8 from Brandon is right, and Lagavulin 12 from Whiskey Jason. It's the Lagavulin 8 was the 200th, the 200th release, Jason. Uh, Brandon is correct. The 12 is an annual release as part of the Diageo special releases. The 12 is a cast strength annual release. You're right, Brandon. Well done. That's two out of two. Unlucky, Jason. Third time lucky. Question three. I think everybody's... Connor's given, uh, sorry, Welsh Tor has given Connor a hard time for answering early, I think. <laughs> Lagavulin like 8 overpriced. Ah, Rover, come on. Compare it to the Ardbeg 10, which is overpriced as well. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> Listen, for the whiskey experience that it gives me, I enjoy it. And um, if you can compare it to the 16, it seems overpriced, but I still think the 16 is is bloody well priced for a 16 year old whiskey that does what that whiskey does um everybody pretty much got that right lagavulin 8 question three which distillery released an expression in 2017 called full volume for the u.s market this distillery along with its stable mates released a slew of new releases. Three, two, one, enter your answers. There has never been uh, so many new releases as I've seen from this distillery this year. Um, but they released, for the US market, they released us an expression called Full Volume. It was aged, I think, exclusively in ex-bourbon casks. And I think there was some tie up with some kind of musician. Wow, everything's pouring in. How am I going to see? Okay, Whiskey, Jason, well done, Highland Park. Yes, so where is Brandon? Highland Park, both of you are correct. Highland Park, guys, well done. Everybody seemed to know that. Connor was saying 2017 is the year HP fucked the brand. Well, it's certainly the year that they cashed in on it, that's for sure. I don't know if they're going to screw up the brand, um, but they will be judged on the quality and the legacy of the whiskey that they're putting out. And I haven't had, um, I haven't been in a position to try a lot of the new releases that's come out from them. 
But I have to say that one of the best HPs I tried this year was an independent. It was wonderful whiskey. Um, and there's a lot more Edrington stock available for independence right now as well. You would maybe there's a distillery to pay for. I don't know. Um, but good. Yes, finally one correct answer, Jason. You're absolutely right. Well done. So Connor's got, uh, Brandon, sorry, has got a full house. And uh, Whiskey Jason's got his first one correct. Okay, question four. In terms of overall capacity, this is a tricky one. In terms of overall capacity, which of these distilleries is smallest? So I'm just going to give you an A, B, and C, and you just need to put in the letter A, B, or C after I read them out. A is Blair Athol. B is Royal Loch Nagar. And C is Kalila. So this is tricky. So type in A, B, or C, and hit enter. Three, two, one, send. Why well, I'd be impressed if you had tried most of them, seeing as how many came out and all. Let's get over saying, yeah, because they're dumping the cash onto the market when they can sell the young stuff with no details for right prices. Well, it's it's good days for us, Rover, isn't it? Because if you know what you're looking for, especially when they were they were putting out like uh, vatted casks in excess of 20 year old, year, years old of Glenrothes, Edrington, and, um, sorry, Glenrothes, Highland Park, and McAllen, vatted. I guess it would have been stock that might have gone into things like the old, 18-year-old uh, Fabus Grouse and things. But I was able to pick up a 23-year-old bottling of that as a, from an independent for £40. And it was absolutely gorgeous whiskey. Okay, it's vatted malt. It's not a single malt, but it's delicious. Everybody seems to be answering. Tuna said C. Everybody's answering B, B, B. Everybody knows. Where are my guys? Uh, lowest to highest. Whiskey Jason has said B. You're correct, Jason. Royal Loch Nagar is the smallest. Welsh has seen what was the question. Welsh asked which of these those three distilleries were the smallest. Blair Athol, Royal Loch Nagar, or Kalila? Kalila is fairly huge. I think it's about six million litres. Um, Blair Athol is just under three million litres. And the smallest is, um, they're all Diageo distilleries. Royal Loch Nagar is only half a million. It's very small for Diageo. Brandon said, sorry, didn't initially understand the question. That might be my fault, Brandon. I apologize for that. I apologize. Um, but B was the answer we were looking for, uh, for Royal Loch Nagar. Kalila is huge. Tom, you're absolutely right. Um, well, in, in terms of huge and, uh, and relative to its, uh, other, the other distilleries on Isla, it's, it's, it's the biggest over there. Okay, question. Uh, five, which Scotch single malt expression did Ralphie just announce as his whiskey of the year? Type it in. I've already brought it up in the feed. And three, two, one, enter. Ralphie's 2017 whiskey of the year. Now, I appreciate this has just been announced in the last couple of days, but... If you were paying attention to the stream earlier. Mm. Okay, you've both got the distillery. I'll give the points to whoever gives me the... Ah, I'll give it to you, that's fine. Everybody's saying Glen Caram 15. Connor's saying who cares. <laughs> okay, good. One apiece. That's good that you both answered Glencadam. It was Glencadam 15 specifically was the expression. Which of these whiskey regions is officially recognised? So again, I'm going to give you A, B and C again. Um, and I'll, I'll just give you multiple choice. And I just want you to tell me which of these whiskey, Scotch whiskey regions is officially recognised. So you'll just need to type in A, B or C and enter. Two of them are regions. They're valid, but they're not officially recognised. Okay, A is Campbelltown, B is Islands, and C is Northern Highlands. Three, two, one, hit, enter, send. So only one of those are officially recognized. Which would it be?
Brandon, C not C. Okay, I'm looking for officially recognized. Wow, the answers are all over the place. The majority is saying A. But Whiskey Jason has answered C. And Brandon Lee has, has, has said C, but maybe he's doubting himself because he's written C not. So what I'm going to say there is that no, neither of you scored there because the one that's officially recognised is Campbelltown. Campbelltown is the only official region. Islands um, is part of the Highlands region and Northern Highlands, of course, is part of the Highlands region. It doesn't go any more granular than that in an, an official capacity. <clears throat> Whiskey over saying the one Mitchell opened Kilcarran for <laughs> so that it could be considered a region. It has to have three distilleries operating in the region, I believe. So Campbelltown is the officially recognised one, yes. Question eight in Scotch whiskey folklore. This is a tricky one, I think. In Scotch whiskey folklore, what is specifically a copper dog? What is a copper dog in the context of whiskey? It might take you a second or two to write this down. And three, two, one, hit enter. Ah, Bradley's, Brandon Lee saying sorry, thought you meant not official. Okay, Whiskey Jason saying it chisels the cask lid. No, it does not. Brandon has said it's for pulling drams from the cask. Brandon, you're correct. Most of the time it helps thieving. <laughs> but yes, it's a copper pipe. Um, they usually have a coin uh, soldered, to, a copper coin soldered to the bottom. There's a hole in it and a chain or a string and they, they drop it in the barrel and they can pull the the this pipe back out the bung and they can sample or steal more often than not um, whiskey. That's what it was used for. A copper dog was used for stealing whiskey. Um, so Brandon, well done. You've got it absolutely correct. Number nine, which compass box expression famously ran into trouble with the SWA? for their avant-garde method of oak aging. So which expression from Compass Box did they get into trouble over because of how they were oak aging this particular uh, blended malt expression? Now I'm going back about 10 years now, but it's a famous story. This expression you can still buy now, but it's, it's, it's produced in a slightly different, still quite innovative, but slightly, slightly different way. Um, three, two, one, send in your answers. Creel, good to see you in again. I can see you're asking me a question. What is the smallest distillery, Edredeur? I know for a long, long time, Edredeur was marketed for their tours and things as the smallest, but there are much smaller distilleries out there than Edredeur now, especially with the explosion of really quite small uh, distilleries. There's a bunch of them now. I would struggle to tell you what the smallest official distillery is. I don't even know what the smallest is now anymore. Lots of people are answering in Spice Tree. Absolutely correct. I don't think anybody's... Uh, Eric Gilbert saying Spice Tree, good stuff too. I agree wholeheartedly. Again, the foundation of Spice Tree is Clunleash, which just, how can you go wrong? Okay, boys, well done. Both of you got that correct. So with one question to go, Jason is on four, I believe. Yep, and Brandon, I think you've got it, regardless of what happens on the last question. Six. Yes, you've got it. So, Whiskey Jason, the last question. Um, for you to get a 50% pass rate, you need to get five out of 10. You need to get a 50% pass rate, Jason. And uh, and Brandon, for one, two, three, four, five, six, definitely six. 
for you to get 70%. The last question is on which YouTube whiskey channel might you occasionally enjoy a cameo appearance from Cousin Shane? <laughs> which YouTube channel might you occasionally see a character called Cousin Shane? Mm. <laughs> Compass Box has investment from Bacardi. If I heard that, I'd forgotten it, Jez. I did not know that. Whiskey Jason has answered. Scotch test dummies. We don't have an answer. This is probably the, the least answered. I think people weren't sure. We don't have an answer from Brandon. Scotch test dummies. Scott Monroe is saying voice of an angel. I need to, and Brandon Lee's uh, finally said, no idea. Well done. Thank you for, for offering, uh, telling us that you didn't know. That's good, Brandon. Well done. So, Brandon, your score is 60%, 6 out of 10. And Jason, in the end, 5 out of 10. So not bad at all. It looked like it was going to be uh, trouble for Jason, but in the end it was quite close. Um, just as Scott Monroe is mentioning the voice of an angel, I'm going to plug out, uh, I'm going to, plug a video by the Scottish Test Dummies. Way back before they were in their studio downstairs where they are, they were um, they were in, um, I don't know if it's Scott or Bart's kitchen, I'm not sure. But one of the dummies, they're in the kitchen and this guy character turns up, Cousin Shane, and they're doing, they're drinking Glenlivet 18 and they give it to him and he's, he's knocking it back and they try and teach him how to appreciate a whiskey and things. But he's not really a whiskey head and it's quite funny in that respect. But Cousin Shane, does something at the end of this video that's wonderful to behold. Amazing. Amazing YouTube experience. Exactly showcases why YouTube is so real, so fantastic, that something like this could be, that could exist on a whiskey channel on YouTube. If you need to find that, go to my playlist on my channel. Go to the, uh, the best whiskey ever. Um, YouTube's best whiskey. It's a playlist that I've got, and it's the first video on the playlist. Watch it and watch it with headphones on, uh, watch it with decent volume, watch it with nice sound coming out, because it's a, a wonderful video. Um, and if it doesn't make the hairs in the back of your neck stand up and end, I'm not sure what will. Um, but uh, yes, and that was Cousin Shane uh, on that channel. Scotch Test Dummies is definitely the correct answer. Okay, while there was a lot of interaction there, a lot of answers pouring in, it was tough to keep up. Um, in the end, most people, I can see most people are saying Scotch their dummies, Scotch their dummies, they knew. Um, so congratulations, Brandon, well done. And uh, you won the quiz. I guess there should be, the difficulty is, what kind of prize would I do, like a whiskey sample or something, or just, this quiz is just really for kudos, it's just for fun, it's just for... Um, and if you're Connor Strang, it's for bragging rights because he got 10 out of 10 last week. Um, so, it's, yeah, it's just to have a bit of fun. Um, there's no prizes. And even if there were prizes, I don't know how I would ship them out to anybody. I don't know how I would get whiskey to you with the, the restrictions and things on shipping samples and stuff like that. Let's see if the Whiskey Rev has fed me anything. Um... Heard a lot of good things about Compass Box Peep Monster. Is that as good as a bit? It's, it's fantastic. I just gifted that to one of my very best friends. I was around at his house yesterday. I gifted him a bottle of Peep Monster. Um, he gives me, he's got a lot of nice whiskey in his collection, and I'm able to, to take what I want out of that. And the both of us um, appreciate Compass Box Peep Monster. It's a very good blend. Again, despite it being called Peep Monster, I think there's a fair element of Clinleash in that as well. Um, whiskey in the six, uh, been having Kilbanach while wow, tasting it now. You haven't missed anything, yes. I think that's one of the repeated ones. Is that right, Rob? Okay, good. Aquaviti, it's great fun. Good. So, again, the other problem that I've got is that, um, 
A lot of the comments that you're putting in here, a lot of the feedback that you're giving me is wonderful and I really do appreciate it. But the chat goes by so fast that I have no chance and after the event you can't read it. The chat doesn't stay. There's no way for me to keep the chat and the comments that are there. So I encourage you all and much in the same vein as that I was talking about earlier about feedback to me by leaving a comment even after you've watched this, drop into the, the video once it appears on the channel. Um, give me feedback, what you felt about it, because we'll refine this and we'll make it a wee bit better as we go on. Tell me what you enjoy about it. Tell me what I could do with dropping. Um, hit the like button and leave your, your positive feedback, your constructive criticisms, whatever it may be, in, that, in the comments on the video when it appears on the channel afterwards. And I'll thank you very, very much for it. Um, we've had 72 people here tonight, which is by far and away the biggest um, attendance I've ever had on a live. I want to protect that, I want to keep growing that, I want you guys to keep enjoying it, um, and I want to keep uh, the content things that you can actually sit and listen to, and I'm always very aware that perhaps me talking um, and monologuing at you might not be the most interesting thing. So uh, here I go to pour my 2017 drama of the year. This year's special release, Lag Villain 12, Cast Strength. It does take water nicely. Personally, I don't think it needs it. It doesn't need it to be enjoyed. It'll probably give up different things for you if you add a wee bit. A lot of distilleries go off the boil a wee bit sometimes, and I was a wee bit nervous and worried that Lag Villain was struggling some years. On the 16-year-old, I felt that I felt like I couldn't trust my palate. It tasted a wee bit thin to me sometimes. And and then other times I would have a dram. I would go out and have a dr dram in a restaurant or a bar or something. It would be wonderful. And I'd say, what's my problem? And, you know, I think it's just consistency is an elusive bedfellow in Scotch. It really is. But this is so encouraging. So encouraging. That's what Lagavulin should taste like. Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Okay, <clears throat> we are now way over. Way over in time again. The other subjects I had on the list that I wanted to cover was kind of outside of my whiskey year was the news of this year. Um, news about um, the reopening of Brora. Uh, I know it's old hat now, it's a couple of months old, but I wanted to see, I wanted to measure your excitement and see how you felt about that. But I covered most of the things in terms of um, how you guys felt about me monetizing the channel, about how you felt about um, having to sit through ads and things like that. And I'm really, really, really humbled and very appreciative of the amount of support I've had, the amount of comments, the amount of positive comments, the subs and things I've had has been wonderful. I really do feel part of a community, it's amazing. Um, there's a chance, there's a slim chance that um, I could hit a thousand subs before the end of this year. If I, if I don't hit the end of this year, it'll be very soon after that. And I could never have imagined that. I remember starting the channel at 31st of January. And in April, I still had 10 subs. Um, and Vin from No Nonsense Whiskey was my 11th sub. And it just started to get... Now, bear in mind, I didn't have much in the way of content. I only had a pronunciation video, a recycled video, and two kind of experimental videos on there that are still there. I didn't have much and appreciate that I didn't have much, but it took a long time to start to grow. But once it started to grow, um, it really did. Uh, Whiskey in a Six is saying it a thousand tonight. I, I don't think so, Rob, but I will share it with everyone what it is sitting at tonight. Uh, 962, so I'm 38 away from that, that thousand subs, which is just amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um, okay, I think I'm pretty much ready to let you all go off and relax and have drams on your own. Um, I was just looking to see. I did suggest that I was going to link this out tonight to see if anybody wanted to pop in, but I forgot to do that. Sorry. I will continue to have guests. There's lots of people that would be happy to come on and support me and collaborate with me and have a kind of nice interaction, a conversation that you guys can enjoy. And um so yeah again feedback on that because i like to have guests and i love that dynamic but maybe 
you would prefer it was much more focused on a community on you guys and to chat and interact and things or a bit of balance with it all maybe you want to see the quiz just once a month maybe you don't need it every show i don't know maybe you think it's a it's a good part it's a good focus towards the end and if the people that don't want to participate can leave early and that's fine too um but in the meantime i'm going to say thank you to the rev again for keeping me straight thank you to everybody for supporting me this year thank you for supporting me tonight another wonderful buzz another great live stream um i'm going to try and read as many of your comments as i can but i'm only going to get the you know the last i don't know a few dozen i don't know how many it would be uh the, the rest are gone forever <laughs> um and but if you want to feedback to me if you want to speak to me in any of the social media channels twitter instagram the youtube comments is fantastic you can also email me um whiskey at .com, and i'll be back in the new year with more chat and i'll try and come up with um, more stuff thanks to everybody for joining in um, you're all wonderful and happy new year slanchava and until next time all the best when it comes <laughs>